friends, Crystal of Oddly Endearing here with another episode of Vintage is All Get Out. And today's episode is a little different. The lovely Mandy of Thrifty and Blessed 1975 has volunteered to interview me. So, hi Mandy. Hey Crystal, thanks for letting me interview you. This will be fun. Yeah, thank you for volunteering too. It's a whole lot less awkward than me just talking to myself. <laughs> no problem, no problem. So, um... Tell me, start off with the good stuff. How did you get involved in vintage selling? And, and what is, you know, what is it like for you, a day in the life of you? Well, I, I got involved in it because um, I was in a nine to five job in academia and I saw the writing on the wall that it was going to be coming to an end in about six months. And so I'd always wanted to work for myself. And in college, I actually sold vintage clothes on eBay to support myself um, when I didn't have a job. And so I knew I, this was something I could do, um, but I never thought about, about it being an actual career um, and something to do long term. So I just kind of, um, I, I took a big leap uh, to get into that passion. Um, I, I gave myself six months to to prove that it could be something I could do successful before my nine to five job and full-time job ended. Uh, but I, after that, I just kind of launched into it. Now it's three years later, I've, or almost three years, it'll be three years in October that I've been doing it full-time. Awesome. Awesome. What's your favorite part? I really love being able to work for myself. I, I never thought that I would be a homebody. Like my mom is a big homebody. <laughs> and I've always I've always been the kind of person that I wanted to get out and be social and do things. But boy, do I love working for myself, making my own hours. And because um, I work best at like five o'clock in the morning. You guys will see me online on Instagram at five o'clock in the morning all the time because that's when I just naturally wake up and I just, Get, have my coffee and get going and that's not really something you can do with a job that doesn't start until 9 a.m <laughs> so and then you have to drive to and uh so I just I love just being able to I have better control of my life I feel than I did when I worked in a nine-to-five job um so just being able to to do something I enjoy is great awesome so do you view it as um a, a hobby or a business and I'm guessing you view it as a business. So I'll follow that question with what is your favorite hobby? Yeah, definitely a business. Um, but it's also just my favorite thing to do. I, I sometimes I apologize to my partner for just talking about vintage stuff and like the business too much because it is kind of my whole life. Um, but I do try to dabble in other things uh, from time to time. I am notorious for um, starting arts and crafts projects and never finishing them. <laughs> I, I, I love, like, yeah, I, I will pick up a uh, watercolor and do that for a week and not finish most of them or pick up felting and do that for a week and not finish them. Um, but I guess as so long as I enjoy it, it's a hobby. Um, but that's, that's mostly what I do outside of selling vintage. I also go to a lot of art shows and sell art at conventions. Um, and I, I don't get paid to do that, so I consider it a hobby as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would say those are pretty much pretty much my only hobbies uh, lately in, the, in this world of quarantine. Uh, my, my favorite thing to do every day is go for a walk, just being able to get out of the house. Yeah, and, and luckily yeah, we live in a really nice neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> and so like our neighborhood is exactly one mile circle. So uh, being able to just get out and and walk in the neighborhood, I do that twice a day, and it's like that. That's my biggest hobby right now, <laughs> walking. Cool, cool. So, um, <clears throat> so where did you get started? Because I know you're in Atlanta now, but weren't you? Didn't you get started somewhere else? I grew up in Rome, Georgia, which you're probably familiar with. It's not too far away from yeah. where you are in Chattanooga. Um, I went to Chattanooga so much as a kid. That was like our, like growing up, if you grew up in Rome, you go on a lot of field trips to Chattanooga. <laughs> it's, it's, and vice versa. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, so I grew up in Rome. I, I grew up with my grandparents mostly. So I lived in a house of vintage stuff, <laughs> not because they liked vintage stuff, but because of it. Bank, rope, don't fix it, <laughs> and, don't, and don't replace it. So uh, I just I learned to love vintage stuff growing up with my grandparents. Um, as I got older, I 
I uh, just kind of loved the aesthetic of it. And I would always like in high school, I would, uh, I would go to two thrift stores and buy only like cool vintage t-shirts. And like, I, you know, that was whole, my whole aesthetic. And I don't know that I've grown out of that. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And um, as I got older, I've just kind of mo moved further and further away from, uh, from Rome, but it's still, I live just outside of Atlanta now. Um, so I'm only maybe a couple hours away from my family and everybody up that way. That's cool. That's cool. Great. So what is your favorite era uh, to shop for and what's maybe your favorite find? My favorite era, um, just for selling purposes, like everybody knows, is, is, the, is the kitschy and the cuter, for the better, <laughs> for those, the really mid-century 1950s uh, made in Japan, little kitschy cute figures. Those are my absolute favorite finds. There's, they're hard to find. <laughs> they really are. Um, but once you find them, you can sell them immediately. So that's, that's definitely my favorite thing to find. Um, it, but I would say... Uh, just for myself, my favorite thing is looking for folk art pieces because I love, love the thrill of trying to figure out who the artist is. Um, folk art is, it, because they're self-taught artists, it's so much more endearing. And um, it usually, the, to me, the folk art has more of a meaning when you know who the artist is behind it and like what their life was or is, um, mm -hmm. if they're current artists. Uh, so being able to, because I find folk art pieces in thrift stores all the time, and it amazes me. <laughs> and, but so I, I feel like I'm rescuing the folk art pieces and and giving them um, a new new chance at, at collector life by being able to figure out who did it and uh, and selling them on. Awesome. So so what is your um, what's your philosophy? It sounds like uh, restore or um, upcycle. I. I love the aesthetic of old pieces and if you can keep it in, in its original aesthetic, more, more power to you. I actually have a, um, my grandparents first refrigerator <laughs> of, of all the things I could have claimed for my grandparents uh, for some reason, when I was like 10 years old, I was like, I want this refrigerator. Um, it's, it's huge <laughs> with a motor on top. Um, it weighs a million pounds. Um, but I still have it in its original condition <laughs> downstairs. Um, I don't have it plugged in. It does work, but the, uh, but the seal on it is broken. So the seal needs uh -oh. to be replaced. Of course, you can't find that anywhere. Um, so, uh, the, I, I love, I love being able to keep pieces in their original aesthetic, but at the same time, I absolutely love being able to give vintage pieces a new life because not everything is super useful anymore. Like a lot of people talk about how, um, how people used to collect China, but they don't really, you know, it just collects dust now <laughs> instead of really being used. Um, and, and one of my favorite examples is um, I actually have a friend named Misty who uh, she is an artist and she actually messaged me and asked for uh, if I would be okay with her buying a milk glass egg platter to use as um, for painting to mix her paint on because it's not porous and uh, it's, easy to work on and I, I thought I think she was worried I was going to be like no you can't do that you have to use it for eggs but <laughs> but I, I was like that's an awesome idea and she uses it all the time so much so she even asked if I had another one recently um, so I I love seeing seeing things like that get that new life because not everything is useful for its original purpose anymore um, so if, it, if you're able to use it use it good good so tell me, what is your favorite find, your best story of thrifting? Uh, my favorite find. So this is a story that not a lot of people know. Um, it actually happened last July. I, um, my my in-laws own a lake house in South Carolina, um, just outside of Seneca, South Carolina. And uh, one of, actually someone here on Instagram told me about a great flea market out that way. And so... I went to the flea market and I, I didn't find a whole lot there, but there was this one piece. I probably walked by it three times before I even picked it up because I just, I didn't know anything about it, but just, it just drew me to it. Uh, it was just this little tin litho bank. And it, eventually I went over and I picked it up and the guy's like $15. And I was like, mm, I don't know. And he's like, Oh, it definitely works. Cause it was, it clearly had a place for batteries and it was supposed to do something. And mm -hmm. 
I, he swore to me it worked. Of course, I got home. It didn't work. But never. <laughs> never. <laughs> but I talked him down to $12, so I at least felt good about that. And, uh, and um, so we got it home and uh, got it open and was tinkering with it. And luckily, those old motors are pretty easy to get working again so long as all the pieces are functioning. And, and he actually got it working again. And so it was this little, uh, little haunted house that a ghoul would or a light would come on when you put a quarter on it, a light would come on and a little ghoul would come out and snatch your quarter. And, uh, and we got it working and it was awesome. And so I started doing research and I realized uh, it was only sold in 1969 at the opening of the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World. And uh, I never would have guessed that because it had no markings. It didn't say Disney anywhere on it. Oh, um, that's odd. <laughs> no year, nothing. And so I was just blown away. I... I had no idea. And so when I started looking at, you know, different price points for these, it was anywhere from like 300 to like 700. It was crazy. And I was like, and most of them didn't even work anymore. <laughs> so I was like, all right, so at least mine works. Um, so I listed it on Instagram. Uh, a lot of people probably remember it because everybody was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Because everybody loves the Haunted Mansion, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me. Um, and so I actually reposted it a few times. Uh, I posted it at 300. And, uh, and one night I woke up in the middle of the night, like I often do to check my phone. And I had a notification that someone had claimed it. And it was Neil Patrick Harris. Awesome. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was crazy. Um, and at first I was even like, who is this at NPH? And uh, I looked it up and I Googled it. And I was, of course, at this point, wide awake. Um, and he <laughs> sent me a for message. A <laughs> yeah, for a week. He sent me a message with his email and his zip code. And so I was like, oh, thank you. And I sent him an invoice like normal. And he paid and I mailed it to him. And if anybody can afford a $300 bank, it's probably Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I later found out that he's actually like the biggest collector of Haunted Mansion memorabilia. And he has like this whole room. There, there's an interview you can find online of him. And it's like his whole room of just Haunted Mansion memorabilia. Um, so cool. yeah, so it was, it was, it was wild. And, and at the time um, I, I like took down the claim pretty quickly and like, cause I, I don't know, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. And I didn't want to like, you know, I don't know. I felt like there was some kind of like uh, uh buyer seller confidentiality i didn't i didn't want to like put him on blast about it uh but he didn't yeah. claim he claimed it publicly on my page uh but i just the only people i told were actually just a, a few of my shop friends that i was working with and they were all just like oh my gosh oh my gosh and, and so um but i didn't say anything else to anybody else so that's my my definitely my favorite find and my favorite sell and my favorite story uh, so far hopefully Hopefully I have more crazy ones like that eventually. But uh, yeah, after that, I started calling myself a, a, a vintage curator to the stars. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, it's just so wild. 